So we've seen a lot of indications that we've got the right structure. So we can stop and declare victory. It looks like we figured out, originally all we knew was that there was C5H10O, and now we figured out what it looks like to have been that structure. Any questions? Well, one thing you should have noticed is that was not easy. That takes a lot of practice to be able to put all those pieces together. That's why I was saying that even though yesterday we covered all the basic concepts, what we went over yesterday was not really enough to actually solve problems. We have to see it these problem solving techniques. The most important lesson to get from what I did here is that I did not just jump in and try to take a guess as to what the whole structure is. That, would, that will take you forever because there's billions of possible structures with five carbons. Instead, I tried to do it little piece by little piece. I tried to, first of all, figure out what each of these peaks corresponded to. Well, let's actually just review all the steps. First of all, very important, find the degrees of unsaturation. Anytime you're given the molecular formula without the structure, always try to find the degrees of unsaturation. That's an important clue. Then summarize the data like this. This is good notation for summarizing the data. Chemical shift, multiplicity, and then notice how we figured out the number of hydrogens from the integration. We had to do a little math here with the, with the integrals to figure out the number of hydrogens. And then I took each of these peaks separately, and I started by not trying to connect them. I just tried to write down what fragments they represented. Notice how useful it was to have this end number. Because here we said, this doesn't just look like it represents a methyl, two methyl groups. It represents methyl groups adjacent to two hydrogens. So this is where we use that spin-spin splitting as a trick here. And only once I had the fragments did I start trying to treat those like jigsaw puzzles and fit them together. Okay? Awesome. All right. Well, obviously, we need to do practice on this to see the various ins and outs.